All right, so in this example here, we're being asked to eliminate the parameter and to sketch this parametric curve. Um, and in that case, what I'm going to get is a Cartesian, when I eliminate the parameter here, um, I'm going to get a Cartesian or rectangular coordinate equation relating x and y, again, without the t. Um, the one thing that I'm going to do in this case first is I'm going to list the range of values for both x and y just to get an idea. So a zero goes from, or from t goes from zero to two pi. In this first one here for the x values, I know cosine itself, as I go from 0 to 2 pi, outranges values from negative 1 to 1, um, negative 1 to 1. But in this case, since I have this amplitude of 2, x will actually go from negative 2 to 2. And then the same argument for y here from 0 to 2 pi, sine outputs the range from negative 1 to 1. So the values I'll get out for y are from negative 5 to 5. So the next thing I'm going to do is eliminate the parameter. This is awkward in this case, and this is important because um, what I could do is, for instance, for the x or the y, usually I'd look at the x first. So I'd solve this for x, but that's going to involve invoking the cosine inverse function. And things get a little hairy at that point because the cosine inverse function has a very restricted domain and range of values. What I can do instead, so I don't lose the information that would be lost in using the inverse function, is actually use a trig identity. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to take these equations and I'm first going to solve them for cosine and sine. So for in this case right here, I would get x over 2 equals the cosine of t. And in this second equation, what I'd get is y over 5 equals sine of t. So then what I'm going to use, since I have sine and cosine in this case, I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity that sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t must equal 1. So then in this case right here, I'll simply replace for sine of t this y over 5, and for cosine of t is the x over 2, and so this becomes y over 5 squared plus x over 2 squared equals 1. Clean things up. I like writing the x term first here, so I'll write this as x squared over 4 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. So there I've eliminated the parameter. Now the question becomes, what is this shape right here? And you may realize that this actually is an ellipse. So this is the equation for an ellipse. Um, and this equation has the characteristics that the major axis will be on the y-axis going from five to ne from negative 5 to 5, and on the x-axis from negative 2 to 2. And the analysis here is, first of all, it's an ellipse because these are added. These are both squared. And so the range of values on x and y are determined by the square roots of these numbers being divided. Give me a second, and I'll start to sketch this out. So again, this ellipse here will be this circular shape that has a major axis that runs along the y-axis. We call this the major axis because it's the longest of these two axes. In this case, then, this will look something like this, which ended up coming out pretty nice. That's pretty good. Uh, quick checks here real fast. Just on these statements, you'll see our x's varied from negative 2 to 2, which is what the x values, all the x values on this ellipse do range from negative 2 to 2. And I see I don't have my negative right here. So let's write this as a negative 2, rewrite this as a 2 so I can see it. And then my y values go from negative 5 to 5, um, as described. The only question I have then is the flow of this. Like, so where does it start and where does it end between 0 and 2 pi? And, and you might have some intuition of this because of how the, norm, the, the unit circle goes as you increase your angle from 0 to 2 pi. But it's just a quick analysis right here. When t is 0, so we're starting at t equals 0 right here, and I plug in a 0 for, for t in both of these cases, the cosine of 0 is 1, so x is going to be 2 when t is 0, and when t is 0, sine is 0, so y is 0. So when the t is 0, I get x equals 2 and y equals 0, which gives me this point right here. So this point gives me when t equals 0. And then I don't need to go through all of the values, but just check one more known value. Let's go up to pi over 2. My intuition is it takes me up to this point right at the top of the unit circle. But let's just double check real fast. At pi over 2, when I plug in pi over 2 here, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so my x value will be 0. And at pi over 2, my sine is 1, so my y value will be 5. 
So actually, this is the point right here when t equals pi over two. And then importantly, you can see how it's going on here. I'm starting at t equals zero. I could have tested more points in here, but I'm getting the idea that this parametric curve starts here at two comma zero, is flowing this way around. 